Gascon has been under fire since taking office in December 2020 when he issued a series of directives that critics have blasted as being soft on crime. Joining us now is George Gascon's former spokesperson, Max Zabo, and Democratic strategist. Welcome, Max. Thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you for having me. Well, 24 hours ago, we had the recall campaign manager on our air with us. He reported that the recall effort that they submitted 717 thousand signatures to the county registrar office yesterday. Max, that's a lot of people. We understand that those numbers need to be verified. Those signatures need to be validated. Nonetheless, what do you think that message, what do you make of that? What message does that send to DA Gascon? Well, first and foremost, I think that the recall seems to have uh, announced an additional 150,000 signatures in a very short amount of time. I believe they, they announced somewhere in the, the middle of the 500,000 range uh, sometime in June. So how they collected uh, nearly an additional 200,000 signatures uh, in such a short time is a bit suspect. Um, but, you know, I think that there's certainly a lot of angst coming out of the pandemic across the country related to crime. And uh, we have to meet people where they are and, and, and talk to them about those concerns. And these are complex conversations that we need to be having and, uh, you know, at the dinner table. And, and I'm happy to be having it with you tonight. And we appreciate that you are here to have this conversation because it's important to hear from a lot of different perspectives. Um, you know, we've been wanting to have this conversation regularly with George Gascone. He was last with us in December of 2020 um, and has denied all of our interview requests um, since then. Um, but we want to bring you back to that date. Um, that was so long ago, I had a different co-host back then, <laughs> Dr. Drew. Um, here is what he said to us at the end of that interview. And I look forward to a periodic uh, opportunity to come and talk to you guys. Our new, our new series right. regular. We love it. Yeah. There you go. You know, it's good. We'll, you know, maybe in about 60, 90 days, we'll start seeing some numbers. Obviously, nothing definitive because none of this will be fully implemented by then. But, you know, certainly six months out of the line, we should be able to start seeing uh, some meaningful data that we can talk about. So he there is talking about uh, data when it comes to the p policies that you all implemented. Um, we've seen some of the numbers so far. Um, homicides in L.A. County are actually down year over year, up pretty big time in the city of L.A. Overall crime is, is up. The, the number one thing that I've heard from so many deputy district attorneys that we've talked to on this show is that they're frustrated that so much has been thought of in terms of blanket policies, not specific case by case, but blanket policies that are driven by ideology. What do you say to those critics, and is it time to maybe adjust that? Well, first and foremost, I think adjustments have been made, and we should discuss that more in length. Um, but look, in 1992, we uh, we we made uh, you know when you make policy based on the extreme, you make bad policy, and that's what we did in 1992 in the aftermath of Polly Class. Uh, in 1992, she was uh, tragically uh, abducted and murdered. Uh, California responded by passing the three strikes law. We increased our prison population by about 40 or 50,000 people uh, in a short number of years, four or five years. And uh, we weren't any safer for it. Um, we drastically increased the amount of racial disparities in the criminal justice system, as everybody, everybody knows. Uh, we spent way more money on the criminal justice system. We didn't get anything in return for that. So what George Gascon did with these policies is instead of making policy decisions based on the extremes, he made policy decisions based on the norm. Now, what I think what we hear with a lot of these cases and these outlier, very rare incidents, is where you see the fact that he, uh, you know, his policies that were based on the norm didn't account for some of the most extreme and rare cases. And he's made adjustments to account for those uh, very rare and outlier cases. So I think what a lot of deputies in the office were accustomed to was the remnants of a dated system of justice, which didn't produce safety, frankly made us less safe due to the extraordinary rates of recidivism and more victims that we created. It, it was in, it defined by wasteful taxpayer spending, racial disparities as well, and, and we are left no better for it. Now, change is hard, and especially when you're trying to change a system that is so steeped in tradition, uh, it, you know, there are going to be people who are part of the status quo, frankly, you know, you see law enforcement associations that have a lot of their both financial and political clout tied to these policies, right? 
it, the more criminalization, the more you, you criminalize things, the more police you need, the more, the more prosecutors you need, the more jails, the more jail guards, the more prisons, the more prison cells you need. And there is billions of dollars tied up in that system, and that is a, a political reality that the reform movement is coming in into step uh, is confronting. In so much as but, there needs to, there, there's a lot that needs to be changed, and there's a lot of forces that are trying to stop that change from happening. But just to clarify what you're saying, are you saying that coming in initially and having these blanket policies was a mistake? And that now that you've learned and you've seen the data, it is important to take things more on a case-by-case -case basis and not just say we're doing it all one way. That's not what I'm saying at all, actually, Alex. What Mr. Gascon during the campaign made a number of promises to the, to the voters, which they, uh, they, they voted him in on, right? The, the platform that he ran on is what ultimately he secured his uh, you know, significant victory with as a result. And... You know, when he came into office, the deputies within the office made it very clear that they were going to fight him on every step of the way. If you, so he had to implement bright line rules to ensure that, uh, you know, justice was exacted and actually uh, that these, to, to ensure that, you know, basically excessive sentences that didn't produce safety, that were wasting taxpayer resources and creating these disparities, did not continue to be a defining characteristic of the criminal justice system in Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, since then, he has brought in a committee in order to address some of the ex extremely outlier cases. And frankly, the policies had escape valves where people could have actually, uh, you know, sought exceptions. But uh, many people did not actually uh, either read the policies or work to uh, ensure that those exceptions could be sought. Um, but again, generally speaking, what we have is a, is a situation where he came into office and a lot of people were trying to fight these policies out of the get-go. They made it very clear they were going to try and stop them left and right. And as an administrator, he had to make a decision. Do I, do I, do I, do I, exact, or do I enact the promises and the reforms that I promised the voters? Or do, I, or, or do I bow to the prosecutor's union and the deputies who have been doing the same thing in a way that hasn't made it safer for the past 25, 30, 40, 50 years? Max, I want to ask you about really the most high-profile case of late because Gascon defended his how he handled the gunmen of the two slain Al Monte officers. You know this case very well. Uh, he decided to give this suspect at the time probation uh, this is despite, and also calling him a nonviolent offender, this is despite his predecessor, Jackie Lacey, wanting to give the gunman 32 months in prison. Uh, the El Monte police officers are now gone, and I want to play this moment from one of the heartbroken mothers of one of those officers. God's just letting all these criminals out. And they just keep doing one crime after the other. Like, I should have been in jail if he wouldn't have been out. My son and the other officer would still be here. What do you say to Olga Garcia and other victims like that? I mean, my heart goes out so much to uh, Ms. Garcia and the family of those slain officers, and frankly, to the entire law enforcement community. Um, this is a tragedy. And frankly, there's a, there's a saying in, in politics uh, that uh, you don't let a good tragedy go to waste. And I think that's exactly what the recall is doing here. Um, they are you know, using these, you know, the tragedy and these victims to uh, suggest that what happened in this case is a result of his policies. And that defies logic in a variety of different ways. Uh, you know, I don't know all of the specifics of the case, actually, to be clear. Um, and, you know, much has been said about the fact that it, it's not entirely sure that a different uh, prosecutor would result in a different disposition. Um, but beyond that, you know, I think that what this does is it, it kind of distracts the public from the fact that virtually everybody we send to prison comes back to our communities to begin with. And with the existing system, right, George Gaston aside, the prior administration, any other county, two-thirds of the individuals that come back to our communities claim new victims within three years. And what we have to recognize is that the existing system has failed to produce safety. The policies that Gaston has enabled actually reduce recidivism. That means that they reduce the total number of victims over the long term. And, you know, t trying to take advantage of circumstances and, and individual high profile cases like this, I think distracts us from the fact that the policies that Gaston is ultimately pursuing will reduce the number of victims and the number of tragedies like this in the long term. And yeah. 
you know, it also, the other thing that this, this tactic gotta, really does, it kind of def, it, it ignores quickly. the fact that <laughs> if they came out in two or three years, sorry, I'm just going to finish up. If it came, if they came out in two or three years, nothing stops this conduct from happening two or three years later. So I think trying to suggest that this is a product of those policies really misses the mark and is really disingenuous. All right. We, we welcome a variety of perspectives here. We appreciate you coming mm -hmm. on. Clearly, we can have a civil conversation about this. Uh, we hope I know you don't work for George Gasco anymore, but we hope that he will consider. We would love to have him. We know he's talked to a lot of our colleagues now for in-depth interviews. We're willing to give him 20 minutes unedited and talk with him about his perspective as well. Uh, Max, it's an important conversation. We hope you'll come back. Thanks so much for sharing your views. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.